So, you're looking into vintage lenses, either because you want a cheaper option to modern optics, which are very, very expensive, you want some lenses with a bit more character, or you're just a filthy hipster, or a video shooter, I guess. With mirrorless cameras getting so much popularity in recent years, there's been a massive resurgence in vintage lens interest, leaving a plethora of information in its wake, along with a price hike on some lenses that used to be a lot cheaper. So, you decided, I want to get a vintage lens, but you're not really sure where to look, or how to adapt lenses, or even if you can adapt them to your body, and you'd really prefer not to waste a hundred plus dollars on a lens that might not even work properly. The most important thing to learn about vintage lenses is adapting. This is simple if you have a basic understanding of flange distance. This is the distance from the camera mount to the camera sensor. In order for a lens to focus to infinity, it must be kept the same exact distance from the camera sensor, or film, as it was intended. Like a restraining order, but with fewer consequences and a lot less fun. If the flange distance of a camera is larger than intended for a particular lens, you can't adapt it without correcting glass in between your sensor and the lens, which can heavily degrade image quality and only communist scum use anyway. Or people who just didn't watch this video and bought the wrong lens. If the flange distance is off and you don't have correcting glass, the adapter works kind of like an extension tube and all your images will just be macro. Which can be helpful in some cases, but for most cases it really is counterintuitive and not useful at all. For old hipster cameras and modern DSLRs, the flange distance is pretty large relatively. Nikon has a flange distance of 46.50mm in the F-mount, and Canon EF lenses are 44mm. Mirrorless cameras, however, don't have a mirror in the way of the sensor, so the flange distance is significantly shorter. Sony's E-mount only has a flange distance of 18mm. This incredibly short flange distance allows us to adapt basically any lens we want to the camera. So, this leads to the question, what lenses can be adapted to what bodies without the commie scum that is correcting glass? Well, most mirrorless cameras can have basically any film era lenses adapted to them. So Minolta MD, M42, Canon EF, Pentax K, any of that can be adapted to Sony or any other mirrorless cameras. For this particular video, I'm going to use a Canon DSLR. The EF mount has a flange distance of 44 millimeters. This means we can adapt old Nikon F mount lenses, M39 lenses, M42 lenses, Pentax K mount lenses, and quite a few others that you can view here, but these are the big ones. Now, buying lenses. Buying vintage lenses is probably the hardest and also the easiest part of the process. Since we're buying for a Canon camera, we actually have quite a few options. You have pretty much all of Pentax lenses, which include Super Tacomar lenses, which are just spectacular, along with quite a few Russian lenses. Because Pentax is about as boring as you are when you talk about these lenses, we're going to go Russian. This is a Helios 44-2, a 58mm f2 lens with an M42 mount. This means it will adapt properly to my Canon camera. It will also adapt properly to pretty much any mirrorless camera, like my a7 II. When buying vintage lenses on eBay, you can just type in the brand, focal length, and aperture, and from here, just look at the lenses and get a general idea of the prices. The 44-2 goes for anywhere between $40 and $80 generally. Usually, you want to get an averagely priced lens from a reputable seller. If you read the description of every lens listing and avoid fungus, mold, haze, scratches, major dust, and cracks, you'll be fine. Any reputable seller won't lie about this because they want to keep the reputation. Remember to always take a look at the pictures though, especially if you see any reflections. There's a very good chance you can see the hipster in his natural environment. I personally found the cheapest Helios there was because I can't be bothered to spend a lot of money on an old communist lens. Isn't capitalism great? After you buy a lens, you're going to need an adapter. To find these, just look for vintage lens mount to camera mount adapter on Amazon or eBay. So for this, I would look for M42 to EF adapter. I actually got this adapter for free with this lens, so I didn't have to do that, but I did have to buy my Sony adapter. I just got a basic M42 to E mount adapter. When it comes to adapters, my rule for these is just not to get the absolute cheapest option. There's no electronics in them, so there really isn't much of a reason to go overboard in my opinion. Once you've gotten your adapter though, remember to order some free range, cageless, gluten free, unroasted coffee beans. So now that you've actually bought a vintage lens, in proper fanboy form, it's time to tell you the major downsides. The biggest is the full manual controls. You can't control the focus or aperture from the camera, so that means no autofocus or auto aperture. You have to go to the aperture and focus rings and manually adjust them. It's like a manual car, but not very fun or intuitive. For video though, this is actually a plus because the focus ring is really smooth and accurate. Either way though, I highly recommend using focus peaking if your camera has it, 
or live view zooming. My T7i doesn't have peaking, so I just shoot in live view and zoom in, then set focus. Once you use manual lenses more, focusing gets quite a bit easier, but starting out it feels absolutely impossible. Especially with just live view. If you have the option of focus peaking, use that over anything else. It's basically all I can stand now. Also, another important part of using a lot of vintage lenses is stopping down. Most older lenses, especially the Helios, tend to be softer wide open when compared to most modern lenses. So usually you're going to want to shoot stop down to maybe f2.8 or f4. If you're on full frame or APS-C, this will still leave you plenty of bokeh for portraits or otherwise. This particular lens also has very interesting bokeh on full frame. If you're wide open at the right distance, you get a swirly bokeh effect. Some people really despise this and some really love it. I personally love it, especially since it's completely optional. You only really get it around 1 to 3 meters, completely wide open. You can stop your lens down to get rid of it, or just get close to your subject, which is what makes me absolutely adore this lens. If you get close to an object, you have absolutely beautiful creamy bokeh, plus it's sharp, at least on my copy. But this might not always be applicable to you, considering this is a lens from Soviet Russia, this lens is communist, and permanently borrowed the optical design of a similar spec Zeiss Biotar lens. But since this came from Soviet Russia, a lot of these lenses are rubbish. They have some pretty bad copy variants, and I consider myself lucky to get such a sharp one wide open. I really don't know how much they vary, I've just been told they can vary quite a lot, and have seen that for myself in a few reviews for the lens. I really highly doubt you'll have too much of an issue, but I feel like it was important to note. Also on important notes, this aperture ring is kind of annoying to get used to. Essentially, there's a regular clicked aperture ring that you can set, then a second ring that is de-clicked and was originally used for depth of field preview, but now it can be used for video or if you're just too lazy to mess with the aperture ring normally. Also, the de-clicked aperture is backwards, which is a really nice communist touch and that it's completely backwards and doesn't work at all. So that's my opinion on getting started on vintage lenses. In the future, if anybody wants for some reason, I'd love to do another video talking about where to go from here and maybe more usable lenses that are not full manual or Russian. I think it'd be cool to look at some Minolta AF lenses on uh, maybe a Sony A99 or something like that. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Do like the liking things and stuff and whatever. And I'll see you next time.